So today I want to teach you all the things you need to know about Canva and using photos inside Canva in terms of how to insert a photo, how best to insert a photo, how to use frames, how to turn things upside down inside a frame, and also how you can use some of the magic studio features to create really cool things for your images. So let's dive in. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I'm a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how they can create their own incredible brand and graphics. And using Canva is one of the ways that I love to teach people because it's such a great free tool or you can pay for the upgrade for the pro version, which is, I think, worth it if you're a business owner. And you can actually create graphics that are really quick, really easeful and look really great without having to pay and have a huge learning curve of programs like the Adobe Suite. So let's dive in. What I want to show you first is using frames for your images. So if you are inside Canva, and you want to insert an image, you can upload your own images into Canva or you can use their photos they already have in there inside the elements tab. If you click on the elements tab, you can actually scroll down. You can see there's photos, there's videos. You can use and pretty much do a lot of the things that I'm showing you today, particularly with frames, with videos as well. Um, but if you want to just even just find a normal photo, you just go to photos, you can see all, or you can just search inside photos. So say, for example, I wanted a photo of a donut. I could just search that and there's a lot of photos here. You'll see some have cut out backgrounds, some are just nice plain photos. And so I can actually just click on a picture and insert it straight in. This can be from my uploads or this can be from the photos element section. And you can click on a photo and insert it in. I find a lot of people use frames more than they actually need to. Frames can kind of limit the shape of a photo. Whereas if you have, if you just insert a photo, you can actually insert it, make it as big or as small as you like. And then you can use the little rectangle handles on the edges of your photo. You see there's on the, on the edges and the top and the bottom, and you can actually crop in. This is just a really great way to get, if you're just doing any kind of frame or you want to insert a photo that's just a square or a rectangle or anywhere in between, you just you, you just do this. Don't bother inserting a whole frame unless you want rounded corners or something fancy like that. That way you can move this around. You can use the, the rounded corners to use as handles to make it larger and smaller. And the best thing about Canva is it stays inside its dimensions. Um, it means that it's not going to like squish the photo or stretch the photo. This is a really great thing that Canva has done to make sure that we don't accidentally butcher photos because we don't want to squish photos. Um, if you ever want to move around, like say I've made my own custom frame here of just this rectangle. If I want to move the image around inside the frame, this is relevant for this kind of situation. And when you've actually inserted a frame, which I'll show you in a moment, all you need to do is double click. And the whole image will appear. And so you can actually move this around inside the frame. What you can't do is make the picture smaller than the frame. This means that I can't make this image smaller to make to have space at the top here that's not being filled. The picture must fill the frame. That's an important rule that we just need to understand. I can make it bigger though. I can double click and make this a lot larger if I wanted to just really zoom in on this uh, chocolate donut. And then I click out of that or I can press this little done button here. And then it's just zoomed in like that. Or I can double click and change that up again. I can also rotate it or I can press, um, I can change the frame cropping to something else, but I, I like what I've done with the freeform version. I'm going to crop that back in. Oops, this is kind of like locking it to a frame. I'm going to click freeform here so that I can have this back to the way that I had it. Um, and you can do a few different things in there, but just remembering that those kind of options are available when you double click on the image. Uh, and so now I want to show you two things. Um, one, how you can make an image into a background and one, how you can remove an image from a frame. And so firstly, if you've popped an image here and you're like, actually, I just want this to have a full background of the donut. You could do this by two ways. You could just grab this here and make this larger, or you can right click and press set image as background. And that's going to actually replace the image. If I just undo this, so you can see it more right click set image as background. And that's going to make the whole image into the background. And again, I can double click on this and move it around if I need to or make it bigger or smaller. The next thing you can do is add in frames. So if I go back to this elements tab and just go back to the main elements section, if I scroll down, you'll see this frame section. This is really great. You can also use grids. I don't find I actually need to use grids very often. So I think use these sparingly. I find it's just easier to move things around as images the way I kind of want them to, but Know that grids are there if you want to do them. I won't go into these at the moment. I find frames most useful. So I'm going to go to the frame section, press see all, and you'll see there is literally hundreds of frames for you to choose from here. You've got funky shapes, you've got letters, you've got funky outlines, uh, all different options for you to choose from. So what you can do is you can literally just click on a frame. So I'm going to click this circle here and you can just drag your image into it. If you've already got an image on top of in, in your design, you can just click on it and drag it. So it goes over the frame and it'll insert it automatically. You can do the same thing if you, um, I'm just going to go to my own photo section here 
You can also grab photos from your uploads or from your folders or from elements and drag that into the frame. So I'm just clicking and dragging. You'll see if I let go here, it's going to actually fill it into the background or it's going to fill it into like the full page. Or if I click and drag it over a top of the circle, it will insert into the circle. Again, like I showed you before, if you double click on this, it will allow you to move the image around, make it larger, but not smaller. If I ever decide, actually, I don't want this image in here and I don't want any image inside this, this frame, I can actually right click and press detach image. And that will remove the image that I've had in there and just leave the frame as an open thing for me to maybe insert a different thing into or to totally delete. That's really helpful to know as well. Something I also want to show you if you're wanting something a bit more advanced, like say I've got this this shape, it's not inside a frame, but I want to I want to crop the top and the bottom quite quickly rather than going to top and then bottom or side and doing each of these manually one at a time. I can actually use these these tools up here that the rectangular tools to crop, but I have to hold down shift at the same time. If I hold down shift, then it's going to let me actually crop in kind of any direction that I want to. I find that's just a really great time saver if you're doing a lot of this regularly. Um, and so if you go to the other frame section, you can explore a lot of different parts there. You can search frames. So if I want to do a computer, for example, I want to do a cute little mock-up. I could just press this here, insert it. All you have to do to insert it is to literally, you don't have to drag it out. You can drag it out, but you can just also just click and it will insert it into your page. Uh, and I can just we're going to grab my image, hover over the frame, and then it'll be inside there. And again, I can double click to drag it around as I need to. Uh, so there's hundreds of different frames for you to use here. One I want to show you in particular, uh, if I go to frames again, is arch. If I search arch, you'll see a lot of great arches here. But say, for example, I wanted this arch here. I'm just going to detach this image so I can play with it. Delete my frame. Uh, if I wanted this image to be like an upside down arch, maybe I wanted the, my design to be something like this. If I insert this image now, it's going to actually put me upside down, which I don't want. I don't. I wanted. I wanted this to be the right way up, to be honest. So the way that you can fix that is you actually rotate the image before you insert it into the frame, and it will appear the right way. So if I go in here, if I rotate my image like so, so I just grab. I just grab the rotate image button here. Rotate, 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 till it gets to 180 degrees, and then I can hover that over, and it will pop that in there. The other way that I could have managed that is by going in here. And rotating it like so but you just see it gets really large and then you kind of got to resize it all which I just find is just another step that I don't like doing so I like to to rotate it before I actually insert it because then I have that flexibility so that's a fun little hack to know if you ever want to use a frame the other way than what it's shared or maybe even left or right you can do that same for 90 angling at 90 degrees uh, that's really helpful to know next I want to show you how you can edit the actual photo itself so if I insert a photo I can go to edit photo up here and then I can press adjust. If I go to adjust, there's a lot of really great tools in here for me to use. I can make the temperature feel really quite warm, so make it more orange. Same with cool, same with the tint. Explore a lot of these features. I can make it lighter and darker. There's a lot of different things to play with in here. But one of the ones I really love is the color edit. So I want to show you this one in particular. Color edit will pick up some of the key colors from within your photo and allow you to change them individually. So if I click on this one here, I haven't tested this image, so I'm interested to see what it does, but I'm hoping this picks up the color of my jumper. And what I can do is I can actually play with what's called the hue and the saturation in particular of that particular color. So say if I just grab this little toggle here and drag it down, you'll notice my, the color of my jumper has changed to blue. I could then change it to green. I could change it over to more of an orange. Uh, if there's any other similar colors inside your photo, it will also change those. But if you've got something that's quite punchy in the middle, it will allow just that part to change. So say, for example, I wanted a blue or green jumper. Maybe I want it to be a bit brighter. I could lift up the saturation or if I wanted it to be faded, I could bring down the saturation a bit brighter. Maybe I can play with the brightness as well. And now I've got a totally different color jumper on by just editing the colors in the adjust panel. Use that one and play with those there. You've also got some texture and sharpening here. So there's a lot of different features inside this section you can do. You can also use an auto adjust. That's some, it's, it's hit and miss sometimes, but it can be fun to try it. Um, and you can also even do reset adjustments. If you're like, I want to just totally strip back. I regret everything I did to this photo. You can undo and reset adjustments. Um, and something else I also want to show you here, if you go back to effects for edit photo, there is an auto focus section you can do. So if you've got a photo, but you really want that cool blurred background look, if you go to the auto focus section here, it's not going to be as obvious with this photo here, but I'm going to stick with it. You'll see here it's actually blurred the background a little bit. So if I remove autofocus now, you can see that it blurred the background quite a bit there. If I want to bring this up, I can lift up the blur intensity. And what Canva has done is it's picked up that this is the subject of my image, so it's keeping that clear. 
and I can actually change the subject. So if I go, I want it to be this bit to be, to stay in focus, I can leave it like that. Change, and that's the focus position. And I can edit the blur intensity to be quite different. So that's also really nice to know that that's there. There's also face retouch. There's also blurring for the whole image as well, if you wanted to play with those two. So now I want to show you some of the magic AI features. I'm going to replace this image in here with this one here. Um, and you'll see if you go to edit photo, this is only for pro users. So if you don't have pro, you won't have all of these options first, which is a oldie but a goodie is just a background remover. This removes you from the background. So if I just press this background remover here when I'm inside edit photo, it just totally removes the background. This is so beautiful and seamless. If you want to do this really well, actually click on the filter button here. And you can do some things where you can edit or restore things. So if it didn't quite pick up everything perfectly, you want to add more in, you could press restore, you can change the brush size and you can actually paint back parts of the image that you might want or remove and erase parts of the image that you don't want. So if I wanted to remove all of this part of me, I could just totally paint that away. If you press show background image, you'll be able to kind of see what you are and aren't painting away there. That's just a helpful one to know that is there. Um, and you know, knowing that you can customize that too is helpful. Another one is magic expand. So magic expand, what that's going to do is if you have an image where maybe your arm is cut off a little bit or you want maybe more of your legs, I can actually drag this down press magic expand. And what it's going to do is AI is going to have a look at this and expand that image using AI to be like, all right, what should be here? Sometimes it's a hit. Sometimes it's a very far miss. So feel free to try this a couple of times if you don't get the right results. But this is helpful to know if you've got a part of your arm that's cut off or you need more background available or something else is happening, try the magic expand option. You'll see that it's going to give me four different options once it loads. But this first one here looks pretty good. That's mostly what my legs look like down there. This one here, it's trying to give me some ripped jeans. This one here, it's giving me some nice, it's kind of a bit softer there. That one here is probably the most accurate. So I can just press done and that, that new image is now part of an image that I can work with. I could then go to background remover and do all the other things that I would like to do. Another one here that I love is magic grab. Magic grab is kind of like background remover, but it keeps the background and lets you move you around. So I'm going to press magic grab here. And it, what it's going to do is again, it's going to use AI to look at it and it's going to separate me from the background, but it's also going to look at what is in the background and fill in where I am. So you'll see here, it's, it's got me as an object now selected. But if I move me away, it's used AI to kind of fill in what it thinks would, would have been behind me. So that means that if I ever need to move me around, I can do that or I can kind of have myself kind of popping out of the image a little bit. So there's lots of really great things that you can do with the magic grab. And I think it's a great one to remember that it's there. The last one I want to show you really briefly is the magic edit tool. So this is where you can kind of paint over something and replace it again with AI. If you've watched my other tutorials for the Canva updates last year, you would have seen this one. But if I paint over, for example, my shirt here, then I can tell Canva to replace this with something else. This could be helpful if you're not wearing the right outfit for like a branding photo shoot or you've just taken a picture at home and you want it to look a lot more um, more done up. I'm just going to paint over myself here and I'm going to give AI an instruction of what I want this to be filled in with instead. So I've done happy with my painting, press continue and I could say a green patterned, patterned top generate. You can obviously play with your prompts a lot here. I'm not super happy with that prompt and I haven't tested this one so I'm interested to see how it comes out. But in essence, you can think through what different prompts that you could give it. You could even try putting yourself in a singlet if you wanted to. I love the color green here. That looks really, really nice, but it's literally just changed the color of my top. So I could press generate new results if I wanted to, to just try this prompt again, or if I wanted to describe my, my description and, and fix that, I could do that too. I could say a stripey striped, striped top. Generate again and it's gonna see what happens here. So you'll see here that it's picked up a few different options. One, I've got a shirt. Another way I've got a shirt, which has made me way too skinny. This one here has put a nice little t-shirt on me. And this one here is on a like, nice little flowy kind of top. So you can see how you can play around with these things. And like, I wasn't wearing any of these. I was just wearing a purple top, but AI has been able to do that for me. So I love being able to play with some of these things. So make sure you do that. There's also magic eraser here, which I won't show you now, but in essence, you can use a similar idea where you paint over something and it will make it disappear. So thank you for watching this tutorial today. Let me know what your favorite photo hack is, whether it's one that I've shown you or one that I haven't shown you, because there are so many more that I could show you. Um, and if you have any requests, for tutorial, please let me know. I would love to help. If you would like more help with Canva, I actually have a graphic design course that is targeted just to business owners, helping them to learn Canva, helping them to use it really well and helping them to use design principles and strategies to actually create a beautiful full brand and graphics and ongoing graphics for your business. It is a quarter of the price of hiring a graphic designer and it's a lifelong access to be able to learn from me, learn tutorials and learn how to actually think through your branding really strategically. It also comes with a year's worth of support from me with monthly calls and posting inside our Facebook group. So I would love to have you if you are really getting serious about making your business stand out 
making your business look professional and making, and I guess stopping wasting time at using Canva. So just head to DIYDesignMyBiz.com. I'll pop a link inside the description if you'd like to know more. Um, and I would love to have you if that's something you're interested in learning more about because learning Canva and learning design together is what's really going to help your business to succeed. 